Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our seventh lab exercise demonstrating the ArcGIS hydrology tools. Here we're going to learn how to take the flow accumulation raster we just generated in lab exercise six, and we're going to turn it into an actual stream flow network. We'll also learn about the set null tool, which sets certain raster values to null values, and we'll see how to assign Strailer stream order values to our streams. Finally, we're going to see how we can use these Strailer stream order values to symbolize the streams in an intuitive and aesthetically interesting way by drawing streams with greater probable flow with thicker lines. Now, flow accumulation rasters are really good at distinguishing drainage bottoms. The flow accumulation values at the very bottom of these drainages are generally much, much higher than their immediate neighbors, and as such, they can be used to isolate stream networks. If we extract just those flow accumulation cells with a value greater than some threshold, and we're just going to use 500 in this example, we can have the cells that define the network, and we just need to convert them into polylines. ArcGIS offers two ways of defining stream segments. We're going to use the method that classifies streams by stream order using the Strayler method. Now, the Strayler method of classifying streams is a useful one for distinguishing small and large drainages. The tiniest streams, just emerging from the hills and mountains, are classified as first-order streams in the Strayler system. When two or more first-order streams come together, they combine to form a second-order stream. Therefore, streams of some order only combine to form higher order streams when two or more of those streams come together. You have to have two streams with the same stream order to come together before it can increase to a higher order. This means that in the Strayler stream order system, low values correspond to the smallest tributaries. And, and just to let you know, there are other stream order systems out there. And some other systems use low values to mean the largest downstream portions of the river network. So don't assume that stream order always means the same thing to everyone. And really, in the desert climate of Flagstaff and the, the southwestern United States, the concept of stream order might be a little ambitious at best, since you know all we really have is short stretches of perennial flow scattered around, mostly from springs and water reclamation plants. The stream order values we generate may be better understood as sort of general basin order values instead. Two smaller basins joined together to form a larger one. Okay, let's get started. First, we had to make sure we have our flow accumulation and our flow direction rasters available and make sure definitely that the flow direction raster we're using is the one that is generated from the filled DEM. So we have flow accumulation and we have our correct flow direction raster. First thing we have to do is isolate the stream cells, and we're going to use a set null tool to do that. We're just going to say that any flow accumulation cell with a raster value greater than 500 is going to be part of the stream network. That means only those cells that have at least 500 other cells draining into it. Now, this 500 cell threshold is pretty arbitrary. I, I only spent a few seconds before I just grabbed one out of the air. So you just pick one that makes sense for your data and your analysis you know, when the time comes. For this homework exercise, we're going to use a, a threshold of 500. Okay, first off, let's open up the set null tool. We go to the analysis tools. I'm just going to type in set null. There it is. Uh, there's one in Image Analyst and Spatial Analyst. Uh, we're using the Spatial Analyst license, so let's use this tool. Okay, the input raster is the flow accumulation raster. We want to set our, our threshold value to be where the value, the raster cell value, is less than 500. Remember, this tool is setting values to be null, so we want all the values that are less than 500 to be set to be null. We also can specify what value we want to be used if the cell values are greater than 500. We're just going to set that to be a value of 1. And we're going to set our output raster to be named stream cells. Okay, here it is. This is what the SQL version looks like, a little easier to read. Looks like it might have forgot this. We want to set this as one. All right, hit go. All right, it has isolated all those cells that have a cell value or flow accumulation value greater than 500. We can see them distributed across the landscape. It looks like a pretty decent network for the drainage system. 
Okay, next up, remember all of these cell values just have a value of one. So now we're gonna assign these Strayler stream order values to it. So there's a special tool to do that. Tool is called stream order. There it is. The stream raster is the one that we just generated with the stream cells. We have to specify the flow direction raster. Uh, this is how it determines uh, what's upstream and what's downstream. So again, the tool is depending on a correctly created flow direction raster. We're going to call our output uh, Strayler stream order raster named stream order cells. And we're using the Strayler method. So all that is, is accurate. Okay, there we go. Now we have our Strayler cells. And notice that they're classified as one, two, three, four, and five. The ones are the smallest stream order. That's the, the initial one just coming out from the hills. When two ones come together, they form a two. And you don't get a three until you have two twos coming together. You don't have a level four until you have two threes coming together. So that's just how the system works. If you have a one, level one, coming into a level three, then the output is still a level three. Okay, so we're getting closer. Now we just have to convert these to polylines. There's a special uh, hydrology tool to convert Strayler stream raster cells into actual polylines. And that is called the stream to feature tool. There it is. So we input the Strayler cell values that we just generated. Again, it's depending on the flow direction. So we bring in our flow direction raster. And we're going to call this to be the Flagstaff Stream Network. We'll, we'll leave it as simplifying the polylines. Hit go. Okay, now we have a polyline feature class of those Strayler cells. If we use our Explore tool, we can see that the Strayler stream order value did get transferred over. So if we click on this one, for example, it has a grid code of five. That means that it's the, the value from the Strayler cells is a level five. If we come up with one of these, it's just coming out of the hills that has a grid code or a Strayler value of one. Now I'd like to show you how we can symbolize this in a way that actually is kind of fun for streams and takes advantage of those stream order values. Remember, higher values mean uh, lots of little segments coming together and would suggest a higher flow. So higher values could reasonably be symbolized with a wider line, right? So let's uh, open up the symbology for this. I'm going to symbolize it not with a single symbol, but with a graduated symbol. That means I can make the size of the symbol get changed as the, as the, as the value changes. The field is not arc ID, but rather grid code. Okay, we can already see the shape starting to be more appropriate. Now, instead of a yellow line for streams, I would rather see streams in blue. So let's uh, change the color of that to a nice blue. Hit apply, and there we go. So now we have higher order streams being symbolized with a wider line and uh, lower order streams just kind of fading into the landscape. All right, so the homework assignment, uh, similar to what you did in an earlier lab exercise, you're gonna make a map of this, export it to a JPEG file or some image format, and then insert it into your homework document. Now, if you happen to still have your layout from, uh, from earlier, uh, we can use that. Uh, so I'm just going to click on the layout. So here we are. The layout has adjusted itself to show the new data that we have in here. It, are, it already has my scale bar and my name in here. So all we have to do is export this. It's in the share export layout. I'm going to call this stream orders exporting it as a JPEG file. Okay. It's in this folder. So I'm just going to copy that path. I'm going to open up a blank uh, file explorer, paste that path up here, 
And there we are. And here's our stream order raster. If I wanted to put it into a report or a manuscript or anything like that, I just open up Word into a, the document I'm working from. Come here, just drag it in. And now I have a figure in my manuscript. And that's it. Thanks so much, everybody.